ready to go. My backpack. It's about 18, 12, 15, 17 kilos maybe. And I start from Lukla now, it's about 11.15. And uh, I figured my cameras, I figured I sent my last few emails, and we go. City ki bagori jai, upori thake sa khai, tukura tukura paare, aka kholu sai. Biopi bagori jai, nigori nigori jai, sokulu tuki se pa. Ajiki yo hai So pora, so pore Kohi jai, hil boya mole jai Kudong e kumoli ya Kesa ka Lodangi lo Sitiki bagori jai, upuri thake sa khai, tukura tukura paare, aka kholu sai. Jimane ag bari jau hi khoro lo Jen bi pori te tani dhore Jimane pran khe di jau jivon lo Jen kho ki ai doti rudhe Lani lani pahare jodhi sumi bapare Kupi kupi kojere mone jini bo pare Hopu no russo ta Siti ki bagori jai Upure teka sakai Tukura tukure pahare Aka khole sai Jimane jau nami jau gobi rolo Hagor toli jivon phule Jimane gyan bari jai gori malo Manob jatir ohong bare Poti hima bhangi jai matu khandi khandi jai Siti ki bagori jai Upuri teke sa khai Tukura tukure pahare Aka kholoi sai Hi, good morning. Uh, I'm so glad to be joining you all all the way from Srinagar, uh, all the way to TEDx COEP Pune. Uh, so glad to be here. Uh, I am Krishna Patil and I climbed Mount Everest in 2009, becoming the youngest person to do so from India. And uh, I think that is why uh, I am here on the stage today. Uh, but mountaineering didn't come as the first thing that I wanted to do. Growing up in Pune, uh, my childhood dream was to grow up and become a dancer. Uh, but it quickly changed when uh, in 2007, I went and did my basic mountaineering course in Uttarkashi, uh, Uttarakhand. And I remember this so vividly because we were 174 girls 
uh, in the Nehru Institute of Mountaineering. And uh, on one of the last days that we were there on the uh, course, we were shown the movie uh, Into the Wild by John Crocker. And it was one of the most disturbing films uh, that we had, I had ever seen as a child uh, then. Uh, but to be honest, that movie uh, and the feelings that we went through as we saw that movie remained to be one of the biggest motivators as well as cautionary tales that uh, could be told to a budding mountaineer at that point. Um, 2008, I went and did my advanced mountaineering course. Out of the 174 girls this time, we were just 12 girls that had actually gotten the A grade and moved on to, you know, uh, doing the advanced course. Uh, of course, growing Pune had uh, its own impact on me. Uh, uh, you know, Pune has a great climbing culture. And uh, that was something that had been a part of my life since I was in first grade. So, yes, climbing uh, and the mountains were something that always were a part of my life. But those two courses were the courses where I realized that I do really have a knack to live in extreme environments and to deal with extreme situations. Uh, it was it was finally where I figured that uh, I could be my best version. And it took me no time to switch from wanting to become a dancer to wanting to become a mountaineer. And it had nothing to do with Everest. What is so amazing uh, about that time in my life was that I had no idea that this was going to lead me to climbing the highest peak in the world and then go on to climb the highest peak in every continent in the next year. And uh, a, a part of me believes that I was never prepared for it and a part of me believes that every single part of my life actually built me to be able to live uh, through those wonderful mountains across the world and crazy experiences that they all came with. Everest was uh, one of my most, obviously, uh, I was only one peak old when I went and climbed Everest, so I was a very, very new mountaineer. Uh, at the same time, it was my first expedition where I got to see death very closely. And I want to talk about this because for the last two years, uh, I think all of us have really come face to face with death on a on a level that uh, has been unprecedented. We haven't seen this before. I don't think that uh, I, as a normal person, if I had not been a mountaineer, had thought about death the way that we've had to in the past two years. For me, uh, uh, I think, of course, mountaineering was the first place where, uh, you know, we had to finally really deal with that. Of course, uh, when we were training and stories were told, we were always told about this. We, we knew so many stories about our instructors, but to be facing it ourselves, myself, was one of the most difficult things that I have done. I, I remember being really disturbed after this particular incident on Everest. And um, one of my senior climbers came up to me and said, you know, what's wrong, Krishna? Are you dealing with this okay? Are you okay? And uh, I don't remember what I said, but I do remember what he said. He said, Krishna, do you realize that you are on the same mountain and that you could possibly be, uh, you know, in the same situation? And I said, yes, of course I know that, you know. He said, if you can deal with the thought of your own death, you have to be able to deal with the death of your team member because he also knew the same thing. It took me years to actually come to terms with that philosophy, but I think the the past two years of quarantine have definitely put that on my face. The other time that uh, such an extreme situation was something that needed an extreme measure was the 2013 14 floods in Uttarakhand. Um, I remember Uttarakhand at the back of my hand. I mean, I've been there since I was a child. 
the moment we heard the news about the floods, me and a couple of our mountaineer friends, we all rushed to Uttarakhand. Uh, it required us to be able to put our best foot forwards, to be able to actually use the knowledge of our mountaineering in the best measures possible to actually reach people and save lives. And over the next four months uh, or five months, till roads actually got built back to the rem remotest of villages in the Himalayas, we made sure that food and supplies and medical supplies actually went to the furthest reaches of the mountains. The next was the 2015 earthquake that happened uh, in Nepal, which really shook uh, even the strongest of mountaineers to their cores. It was scenes that we had never, ever imagined that we would see. Entire villages that had been completely reduced to dust. Uh, you know, it, it, when I first reached uh, those scenes, I remember feeling completely uh, disorganized and, uh, you know, hopeless in seeing such devastation. Uh, but again, that time, we had so many problems from housing. We had, we had monsoon coming in the next two months and homes that had to be built on a quick pace with whatever materials we had in the next three months. I mean, the, the fastest way that we, that we could with the materials that we actually did have. And that's where we actually built with plastic bottles. Um, one of my, my team leaders from Everest actually uh, had something called the Surakshit Ghar, which was the fastest building method where they gave only a um, skeleton of a house to someone. And then the family could build with either bamboo or mud or brick or whatever. And that is where we came in and we gave them uh, the eco brick concept where you actually use a pet bottle filled with either more trash or sand or mud and build the walls of uh, you know a, a house that was where we we really realized that um, that a tragedy could actually bring about a, an invention or a way to solve a problem that could actually also benefit the environment. We actually ended up using more than 20,000 bottles to build about, uh, to build a school. Um, and that was something that really uh, allowed us to bring so many broken ends or broken uh, ties together. Uh, what I've realized uh, over the past years is that uh, it is so important for us to reinvent ourselves as we go. Uh, 2017, I was in Bombay and uh, I, if you all remember the Elphinstone Bridge tragedy that happened, I was on that bridge two days before the tragedy actually happened. And I remember being so disturbed by those 23 people that died in five minutes uh, on that bridge because of a misunderstanding of pool girge and pull uh, girge. Uh, that it made me wonder of all the things that I had actually lived through and seen through and, and decided to, for myself that no, if... If I die, I should not die on a bridge and probably die with a bullet. And that's why I decided to move to Kashmir. Uh, it always makes a difference as to what we do with the environment that has been given to us. How we can excel in what we can offer to the world. What, what is needed in the environment that we do live in. And uh, that is something that is an internal journey. It is something that we all need to be in tune with. It is something that, and anything can bring that out for you. It is, it is so necessary in today's times for us to actually be able to find that magic, that calling that can actually 
make sure that you can live your best life and also make it much better for the people around you. Uh, I think that's all my time and I hope that I get to uh, meet you all very soon again. Thank you.